So then, we are back with more understandings from the time of the Second Tabernacle Services, where we find in the Aramaic English translation of the word. This translation comes from the original manuscripts of the prophets of the Tzayelic lineage. So then, we can understand the time of the end as per Yerushiahu the prophet. We find a layer of understanding of the spring feast, the autumn feast, and also the returning of the cities of the Messiah laid away from many centuries. As we then make our reference, and then we obviously have the basis of these understandings from Yerushiahu the prophet, we find then many layers related with the shield. Shiel, if you study the Holy Hebrew language, you find there are many references related with a place of torment. As then many of these modern pastors and teachers of their own making, they do read the Holy Instructions, but unfortunately it's from Greco-Roman translation, and those people they did not understand when they were translating then the Holy Instructions via then the Megillas. Let's try to understand precisely what means then Sheol. It's simply a place of torment, as then you find in Luke, you find a very important understanding where the Messiah was explaining many areas related with riches and then tabernacling. Obviously, the Messiah was very smart. He was not a mamby pamby kind of a person. And if you think the Messiah is this loving person, where then, if you sin or not, he always is going to be there for you, you are badly mistaken. The Messiah is always there, obviously. But also you must do your very best, so then you do what the Messiah said to do and observe, as far as understanding the Gentile position before tabernacling. Let's try to understand what the Messiah did while he was then completing the spring feast. The Messiah was then very concerned with his people because he came from a place where he knew no sin yet he came and he had obviously endured many situations on behalf of not only his people but also the Gentiles if you ask me if I would do the same I would never done what he had done so then since the Messiah is very smart he was then giving parables where then he was explaining the importance of the coming of the Holy Spirit. At the same time, he was explaining the dangers of these world's riches. Let's make this very clear. The Messiah is not against riches. So much so, because when he came from the dead, he spent the whole year with his people teaching them the times and the seasons and cleaning up the holy instructions so then his thousand years would then start. Let's then evaluate what it means shield or infernal. The human beings obviously when they are born they are already born in sin. Obviously the Creator knows how to divide and how to understand when a person is a child, obviously he has a consideration as far as the time of responsibility. However, when the adults they become aware of what is proper and not, then they make choices in life. The Creator has given us choices. However, there are outside influences where we must fight against, and it's not easy. Let's then understand what it means, shield. Shield is the place of torment. As the Messiah was explaining, 
regarding tabernacling he will always try to combine Gentiles and then the people of himself since they were mixed the only way the Messiah could understand those that would come to him was through riches but the Messiah was not promoting riches he was filtering many times the Messiah would say the kingdom of heaven he was explaining as Ruach HaKodesh or the Holy Spirit coming pointing them because heaven was coming he was explaining then the autumn feast was coming nearer and nearer so then he was filtering the people those who were only trying to get riches they would understand the parables in a certain way those who were enlightened by what the Messiah was saying they were preparing themselves for then the Holy Spirit during this time the Messiah obviously observed that people they were more interested in money than the Holy Instructions so the Messiah had to use this understanding so then people would be aware of if they would make a choice of becoming rich and comfortable in this world apart from tabernacling after death the soul of the person goes straight down there is no point of returning so then if you think this world is a torment wait until you get down there let's read then what the Messiah has explained now there was a certain rich man and he would wear purple linen and every day he would luxuriously make himself then content he would drink corrals around you name it and there was a certain unfortunate person he was a man whose name was then Lazar and he would lay at the gate of the rich man while being obviously involved with many sores he had this problem in his life and he was longing to eat the crumbs that came down from the table of the rich man even the dogs would come and lick his sores then with the time these unfortunate men died and he was then resting the Messiah used the understanding of the angels coming and taking him then to Abraham's bosom and also the rich man died and he was buried so then let's understand the rich man was not interested in tabernacling he wanted to make himself contented with this world let's understand what was taking place then with his soul we are not talking about the spirit soul and spirit are not the same they are not you have to understand the spirit as we are obedient what then Shaliak Shahu has said renewing of the mind with the understandings of tabernacling obviously coming firstly with the instructions so let's observe where the soul of this rich man went and while then he was tormented in Sheol inferno he lifted up his eyes and gazed from afar upon Abraham and upon Lazar at his bosom and then the rich man cried out in a loud voice and said my father Abraham have mercy on me and send Lazar 
that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and to moisten my tongue for me. For behold, thus far I'm tormented in these flames. Imagine where the soul of this rich man was at. You don't want to go down there, it's not very nice. And there is no return from there. Abraham said to him, My son, remind yourself that you received your great things during your life. And Lazar then bad things. And now behold, he is comfortable, and you are then tormented. Besides these situations, a great chasm is placed from you and us, so that those who desire to come over from here to you are not able, and neither vice versa. He said to him, If so, he did understand. He could not come out of there. Where he was at, he was set for the second death. When the earth then is destroyed with a shout of sulfur, then the second death then is going to be thrown in this earth while burning. Won't be very nice. And there are thousands upon thousands down there in torment. So then I ask you, my father Abraham, that you send him to my father's house. For I have five brothers. Let him go and testify to them, so that they won't also come to this place of torment. Abraham said to him, They have Moshe and the prophets. Let them hear them. But he said to him, No, my father Abraham, for I am a man from the dead and should go to them. Then, if so, they will repent. Abraham said to him, If they do not listen to Moshe and the prophets, they would also not listen and believe him if a man from the dead should rise, they would not believe him. So then, each person, while living in the body, must make a decision. Someday each of us must die. There is no point of return. Once you leave your physical body, your soul, with the senses that you have, will be in torment as precisely the Messiah has explained. And there is no person other than the Messiah that came from there to explain this. So then, the Messiah never made a mistake. And as we read the Holy Instructions, we must make decisions in life as far as this tabernacling. Church is not going to lead you anywhere. Church is not tabernacling. Church organization is simply a place where then easy money flows. That's it. Nothing else. As far as this tabernacling, let's try to understand what's going on. For us then, let's read 2 Corinthians 11.4. Obviously, Shaliak Shahu was there teaching many scoundrels because they were scoundrels, however, they were people of his very own and he was pointing them so then they would not end up in this awful place. Well, let's read 2 Corinthians 11 4. What does it mean? The system of churches versus tabernacling. Let's read. (laughs) 
For if he, try to understand, mostly males in the past did the teaching. If he that comes to you proclaims another Messiah, whom we have not proclaimed, or if you had received another spirit that's not coming from us, or another kind of Messiah, a Messiah where he is not in a holy of holies. Try to understand where Shaliak Shahu is trying to lead you. And we have not received. Then you must understand that you have then the false Messiah. What does it mean false Messiah? It's a form of God. But denying tabernacling. Let's understand again. Moshe was in the desert. He received the holy instructions. And then the Creator Himself was in the Holy of Holies. Later the Messiah came. And the instructions other than sacrifices of animals. And birds. And the sacrificial system. Was then completed. Then the Messiah had taken place of his father. So then the father substituted himself with his son. So the Gentiles would come being becoming part of the family. So then the plan of the Gentiles then would be completed. This is what it means. So the holy instructions they are absolutely intact. If you think some sort of set of laws were abolished means that you were abolished. The holy instructions they remain as they are. The son simply substituted his father and continues in the holy of holies as per the instructions of Moses or Moses. The Messiah said prior to his ascension, after a year explaining to his people, step by step formation, he was preparing his people for his thousand years of rule on the earth via tabernacling. For if he that comes to you proclaims to you another Messiah whom we have not proclaimed, the Holy of Holies remains. So then, the holy city in the desert would become later many holy cities, as you have many holy cities when you read Revelation. The seven cities in Asia Minor. So imagine the holy city in the desert, then later becoming many cities around the world. That's what it was. And that's what is returning. As far as our churches, they do not exist. Alright? What is the reason why? When the first holy cities came around, the first holy city was on the land of Cush. It was formed by Yohanan or John. The last of the Shilishim, or Apostle. From then on, he straightened out those seven cities that were in sin in Asia Minor. Because there was a persecution of the ascension of the Messiah. So then, since those holy cities were always prosperous, as far as the teaching of the instructions... Then those people, they became obedient as they began then their journey of listening and doing what the Messiah was speaking through his people to do. They did understand the holy instructions and as a bonus, they became prosperous as far as the world is concerned. 
then they began to neglect taxes because obviously they were listening to the utmost and then they began to neglect taxes thus then when the whole problem started when the Messiah was brought before the authorities what did he say? first they tried to set him in a trap and he said give me a coin what face is this? he said Caesar's so then give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar he meant pay your taxes should not neglect paying taxes what those people were doing they were not paying taxes so they would send spies in the midst of those congregations those were simply gathering of Gentiles and they began to find out they were then neglecting taxes does the whole system of beliefs and making their own doings their own interpretations and their own savior so when you read 2 Corinthians 11 4 they have concocted for themselves a Messiah not from the Holy of Holies a wanderer in the earth Job you find there is only a spirit wandering in this world the Messiah must be in the Holy of Holies that's his place So church is false and precisely when you read 2nd Corinthians 11 4 that's what most people believe in the world today because the Messiah said not every person is going to be saved so then these crazy person named Jesus doesn't even exist in the holy instructions as you read is the very person they concocted for themselves firstly they claim themselves they can forgive sins second they claim themselves they can be inhabited by Ruach Kodesh how blasphemous how putrid how can you say to yourself you are inhabited by the Holy Spirit where the Spirit should be in the Holy of Holies as per the instructions of Moses and then you claim upon yourself you can forgive sins ah but you should forgive your brother who gave you the power to forgive sins So the spirit of the churches is the very spirit that via the seat is going to lead you straight down to the inferno. That's the great deceit. If you don't understand tabernacling, when you die, your soul with its senses that you had while in your body, you're going to be in torment down in the inferno, precisely as in Luke and there is no way of coming out of that place so then as we understand what the Messiah has said tabernacling is the center of every understanding and the Messiah did not come to do what he wanted he came humbly and his objective was completing the spring feast even his people they are trying to get a glimpse of the future and he then was explaining these holy instructions as per the instructions of the prophets and then his people wanted a bit more of information so they would try to get a hold of it and would mesmerize the people to get money from and the Messiah simply said negative it's not for you at this point to know times and the seasons as far as understanding the question 
is God going to restore then the power to Israel? It wasn't the time. Then the Messiah completed the spring feast first, then he came from the dead, spent the whole year teaching the holy instructions, while then, miraculously, promoting them the peace, understanding, and harmony. And many of them became scoundrels, rich beyond imagination. So then, let's be wise and make the proper choices. No tabernacling, no salvation. As you breathe your last breath, your soul goes straight down. You have the choice. Don't think you can be a macho man saying that you are ready for the inferno because you are not. You don't know what kind of a torment is down there. And a person can't come out of it. Let's try to understand these via another understanding of Luke. Luke was obviously a Gentile medic. And he was enlightened by the holy instructions. And then later he wrote. But let's try and understand what the Messiah has said via these medic. For they were eating and drinking and taking wives and giving them to husbands. Try to understand, he was explaining of the mundane situations. For they were eating normal, they were drinking normal, taking wives normal and giving them to husbands normal. Until the day that Noah entered in the ark and then the Vesuvius came and destroyed every person. The Messiah is explaining as you are unaware of tabernacling comes a day where it ends as it was in the cities of the plain as you can take a trip over there you find then the pieces of the sulfur in the sand. You light it up comes out a blue flame so intense and so hot that these can melt metal the crater is a very competent chemist and again as it was in the days of Lot that they were eating they were drinking they were buying and trading and planting and they were building but on the day that Lot went out from Sodom then the Creator rained down fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them thus it will be in a day of the revealing of the Messiah meaning revelation meaning autumn feast In the day, he who is on in the top of the homes, let he not come down, and so on and so forth, because it is the end. When this earth burns with intense fire, it is time for the second death. That's when you read it in the Revelation, where then the Creator pauses for a bit, evaluates the entire inferno making sure before their destruction that is not a person over there with a hint of justice 
The Creator does not make a mistake. He knows every person, every soul down there in torment, He knows them. And there is not a hint of justice in them. Yet, for our sake, there is yet a last evaluation and the Creator comes out as 100%. And those people, and if yourself, you don't understand tabernacling, you're going to be part of it. The Messiah has spoken, and what he said is true. It's up for you to make a decision. Please stay tuned. Much more coming up.